We have a wonderful opportunity as Magic the Gathering fans lying right before us with what might be the best Magic set of all time about to drop. We have this little window into the past from other Modern Horizon sets and changes Wizards of the Coast have made to the Magic the Gathering printing and business model that we can use to maybe predict when and how we should buy Modern Horizons 3. And I'm going to be doing that today. I'm going to tell you how I am going to be spending my hard-earned money on Modern Horizons 3. And I have a big theme here. It's, I will not be the fool again. Okay, so I really wanted to cut to like the who, the who here, you know, we won't be fooled again, but YouTube hates fun and copyright stuff, so play it in your head as we roll the regular intro. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. The one good thing about that intro is I am such a bad vocalist, there's no chance I actually get copyright struck at it. But as bad as I am a vocalist, I am pretty good at evaluating how I spend my money on Magic the Gathering products. I bought almost everything that I've bought at an insane discount, and I've gotten pretty good at analyzing the trends that I follow as we track every single sold listing of sealed product on TCG Player. Now, yes, everyone's gonna have some hits, everyone's gonna have some misses, but I want to chat today about what I think about the timing when it comes comes to how I spend my money on Modern Horizons 3 and hopefully that gives you guys some insight as to what I'm going to do and you can follow along if you'd like or you can always tell me how wrong I am in the comment section as not only do you know all the viewers out there do but the channel members who support this channel are always in there telling me when they disagree big shout out to the channel members so when it comes to Modern Horizons 3 I want to avoid being the fool and for Modern Horizons 2 just a little insight into how I engaged with that product I was well, I was the fool a little bit. I really believed that the Modern Horizons 2 set booster box was going to be so hot and fly off shelves so much that there wasn't going to be a massive availability of the product. And boy, was I wrong. We lived in the world where Wizards of the Coast was printing everything to the moon. There was a ton of boxes readily available. And I predicted at that moment, I was like, maybe there's this small chance. And again, I wasn't like all in sold on this, but there was a small chance that they decided to scale back the print run for this product to bring back some of that hype and some of that you know excitement when it comes to limited product and prices going to the moon and that wasn't completely unfounded we've seen wizards of the coast do that recently looking no for no further than the fallout commander collector booster box right it's extremely limited in nature we've saw the ravnica remastered collector booster box and yes i know that product did not take off it was not highly sold in fact it was one of the worst selling magic sets of the year and maybe even all time you can check that date out at cardboardfinance.com as far as tcg player numbers are concerned but their idea of the limited nature of some of their products was always there i just picked the wrong moment and since then i have learned so much about the availability of magic gathering products and wizards of the coast has showed us that they while you'll want to make some products super limited but other products they realize and lean into it's a game the box should be on the shelves and for that reason the first product i want to talk about and how i'm going to spend my money on is the modern horizons play booster box and i will admit I won't be buying this super heavily on release. I might buy a box or two just to crack for fun because that's the price you pay when you want early cards and just to experience the set as you pay a little more. But I do believe, and this is total opinion, none of this is financial advice and this is how I'm gonna do it, I believe this will be much like the Modern Horizons 2 set booster box. I know it's a pretty direct comparison, but I mostly wanted to remind people that this product was readily available for a long time. Wizards of the Coast wanted this thing on shelves. They wanted it to be able to be pushed out to game stores over and over and over and over again to not only support the modern format, but to support people who wanted to get in on a higher powered set. And well, duh, it's a good selling product. They wanted to have it to sell. And I think this is a really good thing. I don't think this is bad. I believe that popular sets and their play booster boxes should be on shelves. Looking at Lost Caverns of Ixalan as a recent standard Magic the Gathering set, the set booster box is still holding strong at the 125 to 132 mark on the secondary market, and it's readily available. It's out there, you know, a ton, and it's holding that price because it's a good product. You could tell me a story where Modern Horizons 3 follows that trend for a long time. But in my opinion, totally my opinion, and let me know if you disagree, I think they're going to print a ton of this. I think it's going to be available for a long time. And for that reason, while I might buy a box or two and just buy singles on the secondary market, 
I do think there will be opportunities to buy this box either on sale or at a discount as 2024 goes on. That's my massive prediction. We'll put on our tinfoil hat. We used to do that way more on the channel, put on the tinfoil hat and make predictions, but that's my first prediction for Modern Horizon. And some people are gonna be like, well, duh, of course, but it's not that well known in the Magic the Gathering community. Look at how many sales happen right on release and people just aren't patient. They have to get that in their hands. And again, I'm totally down for that. But me personally, I'm gonna be waiting, but there's a product that I don't know if I'm going to wait on it. It looks like I'm going to load up the limited availability gun and I'm going to shoot that bullet one more time. The Modern Horizons 3 Collector Booster Box. This is a product that, in my humble opinion, based on how collector booster box sales have trended on TCG Player with other limited sets, looking at Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings Special Edition, uh, all of the commander sets, yes, including Doctor Who, which wasn't that popular, but then other collector boxes with crazy chase cards in them. Again, we harken back to Lost Caverns of Ixalan and even Wilds of Eldraine, those products came out at a premium they then dipped a bit wilds of eldraine more than others but they do come down a bit but then products like that if they are limited in nature they have chase cards and playable cards that people want to add to their decks and collect have done extremely well and with wizards of the coast seemingly seemingly leaning in to the nature of collectability with some of the recent collectible products I believe there is a time very shortly post-release to buy Modern Horizons 3 collector booster boxes. Unless you have a lead, you know, before that, feel free again, spend your money how you want. That is my strategy. I'm going to let Modern Horizons 3 collector booster boxes release. I'm going to see if there's a couple extra out there. I'm going to follow those price trends and I am going to risk, you know, if this thing just comes out and shoots up to the moon right away, ugh, not great for me, but I am going to risk it to try to save a couple bucks here and there, pick up the product, and then hold some on my shelves because as you can see, I'm not some sealed product investor, but I do like collecting these Magic the Gathering timepieces so I can either open them later or just leave them on my shelf and see how they do in the long run. It's something I'm super passionate about, and I will be going in on this with Modern Horizons 3 as well, and I'm really excited to see how that turns out. But that's the two big products. Everyone's you know here for those. Here are the massive unknowns and the hugest, in, in my opinion, the biggest opportunity for swinginess in the set. The first is going to be the Commander Collector decks. These things are so unknown. According to our information, our sales data that we track on TCG Player, this is a wildly non-popular product. And while we haven't gotten a ton of spoilers about the deck as of the recording of this video, it could be leading to a lot of the wait and see-ness of those sales, I really do believe, much like the collector cool decks for Universes Beyond Warhammer that I have behind me, I think that these decks are going to age extremely well. I do believe that there's a really cool opportunity, if these are limited in nature, to add them to any collection, have a sealed set of collector decks with all the shininess and the craziness, and I think it's going to be looked back on fondly. Commander decks have this this unique nature of it's hard to reprint a lot of the unique stuff or the you know the individual stuff in a commander deck and it's hard to justify that in other commander decks you can always do you know a really popular single here your chaos warp that's been printed in your into the ground maybe you're looking at a fierce guardianship you know that was once this and is now this after a reprint things like that but i think the actual core commander deck itself is a really hard thing for Wizards of the Ghost to be like, yeah, here, have some more. I think in, you know, three, five years, these things are, wow, a really cool piece of Magic the Gathering history. And if the community takes to the collector nature of these things, it could be really neat. And on the downside, you have a play experience. Now you're playing, you're paying way too much for a play experience. You're not, if you're buying these collector commander decks, you're probably not doing it just to be like, hey, I can just jam commander with my friends. No, you're buying it as a collector item. So you're kind of all in on that path. And I think these products could really do well, but it's probably, in my opinion, maybe the biggest risk of the entire set, the collector commander decks are out there. But the collector commander decks, like, listen, if you have any insight on those as to like what your plan is, let me know. My plan is to pick them up and put them on my shelf. I am going to, I have another product that I'm gonna put down and just start playing and have sleeved up and ready to go for game nights, friends coming over, whatever it might be. But that is one that I am, eh, I think could really do well sitting on the shelf and look really 
cool and be a wonderful piece of this time in Magic's history. But the product that I will just be buying and playing is the Commander deck set. Listen, the Commander deck set for most modern Magic the Gathering releases is just a huge win. It's just a massive win. I'm not the biggest Commander fan. I like one-on-one -on -one 60 card Magic. I watch old Pro Tours before I go to bed just for fun because I, I just like the beautiful game that is back and forth 60 card Magic. But with a good pod and some wonderful friends, I respect and even enjoy the occasional Commander game. And a set like this makes me feel like, like Lord of the Rings or Commander Masters or you know, any of our universes beyond those regular Commander decks where not only is there some really cool value in the commander decks with singles that you want to add to your collection you might want to build around other commanders that come out of the box but I do believe these products are going to be a wonderful play experience in pod. Now, we have no evidence of that as of this point, but Magic and the, Magic the Other and Wizards of the Coast, their recent history with Commander products has been fantastic. And I am going to buy this right on release, but I expect this product, much like the Play Booster box, to be... Let's call it wildly readily available. This is Magic the Gathering's play experience. This is the starter deck. This is the how you go to the store, buy, sleeve up, and sit down and play right away. And to Wizards of the Coast credit, they always print these things into the ground because that's the way it should be. When you go to buy something to play with it, it should be available for people to play with. I'm a big fan of that. That doesn't mean that, again, the same thing with collector decks doesn't apply here. The idea that it's hard for them to justify reprinting most of this deck all together or certain cards that could spike out of this deck, you know, it's hard for them to reprint that. It's hard for them to justify that. So these could hold a lot of value and maybe gain a lot of value over time, but that's a long time. And I don't like to play the game of, if this game's around in 10 years, what are you? I don't, I don't like to do that. That's, it gets a little bit too crazy for me. This is a wonderful play experience. I'll be buying these, but I'll be buying them with the purpose of jamming games and that's pretty much how i'm going to spend every dollar of mine that i spend on modern horizons 3 i've looked at things like the bundle that i've said you know if you're here this long in the video by the way first of all let me know because kudos to you that is freaking awesome and if you haven't subbed make sure you do so but You've heard me say things on the channel before, like I love the entry level of something like the bundle. Bundle Nine play booster packs, you know, you get a couple accessories and there's some dice, you can go to the game store. I think they're 60-ish dollars on the secondary market right now. You can buy them off the secondary market. You can crack nine packs. You can have some fun with friends. Everyone can buy one. You can play a sealed kind of repack, shuffle things, or whatever it is, however you choose to play it. It's a good way to engage with the set when you've got a limited amount of dollars in your pocket. I think bundles do a great job of this. I, Pokemon is wonderful with the ETBs like hey I want to experience a new set and don't don't you know criticize people who just want to open packs of a new set it's a card game some people just like to open packs and you want to do that without buying a whole booster box you got $60 in your pocket you know the ETBs you got $40 in your pocket you get to go to your game store buy one and have a pack opening experience for less money and I think boxes here are going to do great the collector bundles if the collector box spikes and the pack in there, you know, the gift bundles or whatever, maybe, but I really like the bundles as that point of entry. But for me personally, I'll probably be avoiding that because I am going to buy some play booster boxes and just have some packs around. So this is how I'm going to spend my money on Modern Horizons 3. I'm really excited. I normally don't do this. I normally don't say, hey, this is how I'm going to spend my hard earned dollars on this product. And if you want to know this kind, you know, this kind of stuff more, make sure you leave a comment. Let me know if you want me to buy some products to do box openings for Modern Horizons 3. If you're a channel member, you get discounts on box openings. If you're not, you can join the Discord linked in the comment section below, or you can email me at hometowntcg at gmail.com. We can work out pricing and shipping and all that, and I would love to, you know, open some more boxes, do some box openings on the channel, shout you guys out for, you know, getting some products, and I always try to give the best price that I can. So, all right, this has been a lot of fun for me. Hopefully, I didn't get demonetized from the intro, but, you know, even if I did, a little bit of fun's worth it. Thank you so much for hanging out. If you've never shared a home Town TCG video before. Make sure you share this video because well, it just helps the channel grow. And we're racing to 9,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh, and we will see you around. Okay, goodbye. We won't get again.